and welcome to EA Sports Rugby, I'm Grant Fox. I'm about to walk you through the basics you'll need to know about the game before you launch into a full match. In this tutorial you will be given instructions as you go about completing a series of rugby exercises which will introduce you to the different areas of gameplay. Make sure you pay attention to the controller display on the screen as it will highlight the buttons you'll need to use in each exercise. Once you have completed an exercise, you will proceed to the next one until you have finished the tutorial. If you can't manage to complete an exercise the first time, then that's okay, as you'll have an unlimited amount of chances to try it again and get it right. Once the tutorial is complete, you'll have a good understanding of the basic controls in EA Sports Rugby and will be well prepared to go straight into a match or enter one of the many game modes. First things first, let's get you moving your player around on the pitch, but we thought we'd spice things up a little and put you straight into the thick of the action. Using the arrow keys to direct your player and the spacebar to sprint, you must try to get past the opposition's defence without getting tackled and then score a try by touching the ball down in the in goal area. Holding down the sprint button gives your player an injection of speed, but it only lasts for so long before he starts to fatigue. That's the way, keep gunning it towards the goal line. That's a super effort, not bad for a beginner. Scoring a try is worth 5 points and gives your team a chance to add an extra 2 points from a conversion kick at goal. Next we'll go through the basics of defence, the tackle. Winning a game of rugby, more often than not, comes down to which team has the majority share of possession and territory. So when your team doesn't have the ball, it's important you stop the opposition from advancing. An opposition player has the ball and he's going to charge in your direction. It's your job to lay a tackle on him and put him to the ground. When your team is defending, you can press the left shift key to switch control to the nearest player to the ball. Tackle a player who has the ball by running directly into him. Great tackle, you've stopped him in his tracks. OK, now this time around, we have an opposition player who has broken through the gap, and it's up to you to stop him with the last line of defence, your fullback. Instead of using a regular tackle and just running into the player, you must make a diving tackle. Go for a dive tackle by running towards the player who has the ball and press the S key. OK, go at it. Solid tackle. He'll be hurting after that one. Dive tackles can be a hit or miss affair, but when you connect, there are few players out there who can withstand that kind of punishment. OK, now we'll move on to the fine art of passing the ball. Passing is an important part of rugby, as it's an effective way of moving the ball up the field. When your player has the ball, you can perform a short pass using the A or D keys to throw the ball to the left or right respectively. Let's practice a short pass to the right. Simply tap the D key to pass the ball to the teammate to your right. That's it. Now keep passing the ball to the right until the highlighted player has the ball. Good! You're getting the hang of it. Let's bring the ball back the other way by passing the ball to the left using the A key. Terrific stuff. Looks as if you might have done this before. Now let's try some longer passes. Perform a long pass to the right by holding the D key for a second before releasing it. Try a long pass to the left this time by holding down the A key for a second and then releasing it. Please try again. Try a long pass to the left this Excellent work. Now that you've learned how to pass the ball in general play, you now have the means to become a prolific try scorer. I'll now take you through what you need to do when your player is tackled to the ground. When you have been tackled to the ground, the laws of rugby state that you must release the ball immediately. You must quickly bind some of your teammates to the ruck to prevent the opposition winning a turnover. Tap the S key to bind teammates to the ruck. Each time you press the S key, a new player will make his way to the ruck to assist. The ruck gauge above the packing players will display just how well your team is faring in the contest. Yeah, good There are many ways to play the ball from the ruck, but we'll touch on the basics for now. 
Pressing A or D will make the scrum half pick the ball up and pass to your team's backs on the left or right respectively, while using the left shift key or space bar will pass the ball to the forwards. Play the ball using any of the available pass buttons. Yep, nice one. You've just learnt the basics of how to win the ball and play the ball from the ruck. Kicking the ball in general play is an important part of rugby. A player will often punt the ball some distance up the field when his team is deep in defensive territory. To punt the ball, you press and hold the S key in order to power up the kick. At the same time, you must direct the kick where you want it to go by using the arrow keys. To pass this exercise, you must punt the ball across the touchline into the area marked with red. Nice kick. You've got plenty of power and distance behind that one, and that's a quality kick into touch. Those are the type of punts which can really ease the pressure when you're deep in defence. Now, I'm going to walk you through how a scrum is played. When the opposition team has committed a minor infringement during play, such as a knock-on or a forward pass, you are awarded a scrum. To feed the ball into the scrum, press the S key. OK, that's a good start. So, now that the scrum half has put the ball into the scrum, you need to hook it backwards with your hooker's feet as quickly as possible. To hook the ball, use the Q key. You should try to time it so that you begin to hook the ball as soon as the ball has been released into the scrum. If you manage to hook before the scrum half releases the ball in a match situation, you will be called for foot up, which is punished with a free kick to the opposition. Well done. That was a good hook at the ball. Now that you've played the ball backwards to your team's advantage, you need to drive forward and over the ball. To drive your pack, press in the direction you want them to push with the arrow keys. Once the ball is at the back of the pack, press the D key to pick it up and your scrum half will play it to the backs. And that's what I would call a well-executed scrum. Nice work. Use what you've just learnt when scrummaging down in a match and you'll be doing yourself and your team a huge favour. Let's take a look at how the line-out is played. When the opposition has put the ball out of bounds over the touchline, your team is given possession of the ball at the line-out. Your team then has the task of throwing the ball back into play with the intention of retaining possession for your team. There are three lengths of throws that can be used in the line-out formation. Press the S key to perform a short throw to the front of the line-out. Press the E key to perform a mid- Well taken line-out. You timed the jump to perfection and he got his hands on it. Fantastic. Goal kicking is an extremely important part of rugby. It can often make the difference between victory and defeat. Aim the targeting arrow at the centre of the goal by using the arrow keys. OK, good. Now kicking for goal is a three-step process. It involves the gauge you see at the bottom left of the screen. Pressing the S key will start the gauge filling. The more the gauge fills in a clockwise direction determines the power of your kick. Press the S key again before the gauge fills all the way in order to set the level of power in the kick. Finally, when the meter returns in an anti-clockwise direction, you must press the S key again to stop it in the accuracy zone which is at the bottom of the gauge. The closer you stop the meter to the centre of the accuracy zone, the more accurate your kick will be. Fantastic effort. That there is a great example of how to strike the ball at goal and put the points on the board. Well done. That concludes the tutorial, introducing you to the basic controls of EA Sports Rugby. Well, that's all from me for now. I'll be keeping a keen eye on you as you make your big debut in EA Sports Rugby. Bye for now.